So this is a big, sharp sword. It definitely feels like a powerful thing. Obviously, this is luck, later pluck. When we built this sword, it, it was not something we had made in a little while. You know, a big, kind of classically formed sword, forged out, ground, worked through. But there are some things that are a little odd. This mount that goes back towards your hand, it, it certainly is not seen on any other weapon, and it does get in the way of your hand just a little bit, but it works. You know, it works as a guard. Big cross guard, you saw us, uh, you know, you saw us form the cross guard where we were able to cut that on a lathe and go through. With the shape of this handle, we made the decision to go ahead and make it out of steel. It does add a lot of weight to this weapon, but you know, it, we, we knew that the visual, we needed this visual to have these angles in this form. We knew we were gonna brass the whole thing to give it that kind of golden hue. Um, and so we, we went ahead and made it, like I said, we made it all out of steel. We've got glass set in for the gemstones because there's really no gemstone this big. If this was an amethyst this big, it would cost a fortune for us to, uh, to put that together. And you watch the Man at Arms episode where we're, where we're making this. Um, when we get to the end and we're do the, doing the testing, one of the things that we do is when we're doing what we call the beauty shots at the anvil, is the piece is not sharp at that point in time so that everybody can handle it so the camera crew is safe um you know the gaffer can you know get close to it with lighting and we can get it all figured out and then at the end before we take it out and we do the demo where we're chopping and doing all the rest of it we take it apart we sharpen it we put it all back together well it's always extremely rushed and this was a time where i had done some casting work for some of the other episodes the same uh, filming time period and I'd stayed up all night for a couple of nights. So I was extremely tired, not paying attention. And I reassemble it wrong. I actually put this guard over the cross guard. So these two pieces are reversed. So if you go in and you watch that testing section, you'll see that it's assembled wrong. It actually still performs just fine and really didn't get in anybody's way. But uh, we didn't even notice it at the time because you've got this big handle and you're just trying to control this big, sharp, scary sword and then by the time we had done all the testing and we realized it there wasn't enough light left out because when we're doing that testing we're working outside and so we have to kind of be at that certain time of the day where you've got the really you know attractive light coming in and giving us a good look on all the weapons and you know something we can work with whereas when we're filming in the shop obviously We've got, you know, all the lighting is set. Uh, Steve Scott, who does all our lighting as the gaffer for the show, um, has everything set for us. But it's very hard to do outside without having giant lights to kind of take that over, which doesn't make a lot of sense for us. We just stay with that window of time. So we didn't have enough time to go back and change it. But you can put both hands through it, and you go back and you watch uh, how we swing it. You can really get into it. Um, it's quite sturdy. Not only is the blade fairly wide, is fairly thick here. Uh, so you've actually got probably three eighths, I would say, uh, roughly uh, thickness here. It's a substantial blade. It'll go through pretty much anything. And it, and it is, as I said, it is quite sharp. We put a kind of a second, what we call a secondary bevel on it. Um, but that keeps the form of the blade really beefy. So you could chop something with this if you wanted. Uh, obviously chopping wood with a sword isn't great, but this thing would certainly do it. It has, it has the weight to kind of go through pieces. and. Uh, when we assembled, uh, we actually inset this nut down inside the pommel so that it would draw everything together so that we could, you know, keep everything aligned. Because if you were to try and do something where this screwed on, it would be hard to get it always in the correct position and it could loosen up as it started to wear. So with this, we can tighten that down. And that's something you see in some of the kind of pistol grip modern fencing things where you, you can uh, you can run that in with a hex wrench and, and tighten it down a lot. And the visual is not bad. We could always cap it off if it was an issue. If this was just uh, peen, which a lot of people always tell us is the proper way to do things, um, on a big heavy blade like this, it can actually stretch the peen area in the tank. Um, and so I think that the screw on like this is actually a pretty, pretty substantial way to do it. So. The brassing has held up extremely well. It does, it's an extremely permanent thing. Um, I've actually seen things on leaves where people have done this same brassing technique that you see in the episode, where they do that brassing technique on leaves of, on things that are outside. And you know, 20 years later, it's still very, very different. It'll take a patina and it'll start to look like brass that's been left outside instead of steel that's left outside, but that's certainly fine and it's still uh, 
will stay. So it's an extremely permanent thing, and uh, I think that we're, we're going to keep this sort of around for a long time. Thank you. Click the logo to subscribe, or click one of the videos to see more here on the Baltimore Knife and Sword channel, or go to Almy and watch Man at Arms.